This is Liquid Digital Trends, and we're here with Dell taking a look at some brand new laptops that they are about to launch. And one of the most interesting that we're seeing today is the XPS 13 2-in-1, which got a brand new redesign, and we're gonna show you what it's like right now. Now on the outside, it might not look all that different from the previous XPS 13 2-in-1, or just an XPS 13 in general, but when you open it up, it's pretty different in terms of the experience you're getting. First thing you notice right away is the screen. It's no longer a 16 by nine screen, it's actually 16 by 10, which kind of fits that more of a MacBook style aspect ratio. And I think this is a really nice change for the XPS 13 2-in-1, just because you get more screen real estate. And I think we all like that. So the further we get closer to three by two, you know, the more I'm gonna be happy. So I really like this decision. Of course, you still have those really thin bezels along the frame of the display. And we have the webcam being moved from the bottom up to the top, just like they did with the XPS 13 earlier this year. Again, another really nice move to shrink that webcam down, but still make the bezels really thin. The other big change is on the keyboard and the touchpad. So the keyboard uses a maglev keyboard that they brought to the XPS 15 2-in-1 last year. It's kind of an experimental type of keyboard that has this kind of harsh but bouncy, clicky mechanism. It's pretty interesting. I think some people will like it, some people might not. There's not a lot of travel at all, but it is super clicky. And the one thing they have changed from the 15 2-in-1 is that this it's a little bit quieter because that one was pretty loud. So I like that, but I think this is kind of like, you'll need to try it to really get a feel for whether or not you like it. The touchpad, however, I think everyone will like this. It's bigger. So the because you have a little more of a larger screen, you have a little more space down here for a touchpad. So Dell has grown the touchpad height a little bit, which is always nice to see. And I think just in general, this keyboard touchpad layout looks really nice. I mean, the keyboard goes right up to the edge and it just gives that really modern, clean look. Now, this is a two-in-one, so obviously you can flip it all the way around and use it as a tablet. A couple things that are helping the XPS 13 two-in-one this time around is it's quite a bit thinner than before. It's 8% thinner, which might not sound like a lot, but when you're talking about a laptop that was already significantly thin, you know, that's pretty impressive. And that kind of changes the port situation here too, because you just have two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, one on each side. Nice to see that you have the option of both on either side, so you can charge from either side. Um, and then the last thing you have is the micro SD card slot, still on the left side, really handy to have. So this is a big redesign for the XPS 13 2-in-1, but actually what's going on, on the inside is even more interesting, especially for Intel. So basically this is the first device we're seeing that has a 10 nanometer, 10th generation Intel processor. And it's not the Y series ones that we got in the previous XPS 13 2-in-1, this is a U series which means you're gonna go up to four cores in the Core i7 version and all the way down to the two cores in the Core i3 version. As for what the 10 nanometer actually means for you, you know, the person actually who might actually buy this product at some point, you know, we can't really say until we get down into some performance and into some testing, but um, it is the first product we've seen with this and it's been a long, long time coming. So it's nice to see the 10 nanometer ice lake processors actually make it into a device that you can hold. Now, because this uses a U-series processor rather than a Y-series processor like the previous versions did, it's no longer a fanless device. So you've got two fans on the inside and there's basically a whole new thermal system, which includes these four vents along the bottom, which is also where the speakers are located, which is kind of cool. The entire system uses a vapor chamber cooling system, which is something we've seen in other laptops. They use them in smartphones a lot, and it's a much smaller, more compact way to keep this you know, up to four core processor cool. One more thing to mention regarding these Ice Lake 10 nanometer processors is graphics. Graphics have been talked about a lot in terms of getting a big upgrade in terms of the integrated graphics options. The XPS 13 2 and one the Core i3 and Core i5 versions don't come with these new upgraded integrated graphics. They still have the, you know, you're gonna, it's what you'd expect in, a, in any other laptop you buy. However, they do have an option that's on the top end to get the Iris Gen 11, we're not sure quite what the name is gonna be yet, but these are the Gen 11 graphics that Intel has been talking a lot about, which should actually be able to give you some more productivity um, power and also some gaming power if you wanna do some light gaming on the side. We don't know exactly what the numbers look like yet, we don't know exactly what the performance is gonna be, but you do have an option in a laptop this thin to go up to those upgraded integrated graphics. 
Now obviously there can be a lot of different configuration options that come with the XPS 13 2-in-1 when you go out to buy one. It starts at $1,000 for the Core i3 10th Gen with four gigabytes of RAM, obviously you can upgrade from there, going all the way up to a 4K screen and a Core i7 processor. Now we don't know exactly when the 1321 is gonna be coming out. They're saying by the end of the summer, but we're gonna be getting a lot more information, not only on this device, but on all these new 10th gen 10 nanometer processor laptops. So really excited to see these more, get our hands on them and get them tested. We're gonna be doing a full review when we eventually get this into our office. But until then, make sure to check out Digital Trends and subscribe here for more from us.